Today on the Mandroid Show. <laughs> we 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 kind of already knew that. Hey, look, sheeple. That is quite a mixture of heads there. Oh, I get it. You're telling me the one that the one next still not uh just uh yeah just wow. Ah. What's happening, my Android friends? Welcome to Friday's episode of The Mandroid Show. I am Dave, of course, your Mandroid host. I appreciate you clicking in. We've got a lot to go over, as well as some hotness towards the end, so let's get started. Android 4.4 KitKat, available October. Possibly, according to Nestle. Now we did hear a rumor that Google will be hosting an event on October 14th where they will unveil the Nexus 5 as well as Android 4.4 KitKat. But then Nestle went on their KitKat Facebook page and then they're answering some questions and somebody asked that, you know, that, that pressing question, when is Android 4.4 going to be made available to the public, where they answered in October. Now this might be a little premature because I don't know if Nestle knows exactly how the tech world works or at least the Android world because sometimes you unveil something, it's not made available that day, although they did it that one time, I think when Jelly Bean showed up, right? Am I right? It's, you know, I burn brain cells constantly, so sometimes I just don't know. I don't know if it'll be made available to the public, but this might have just totally confirmed that that event is going to happen in October. Then again, Google might just be like, all right, yeah, Android 4.4, who wants it? Anybody? Anybody? Sorry, just Nexus users for now. Let me know you guys think though, do you think Nestle was a little premature when they said this? Do you think Android 4.4 will be made available to everybody in October? Let me know. CyanogenMod is no more. They've become rich and now they're Cyanogen Inc. Kind of hard to believe that like five years ago we were flashing CyanogenMod ROMs on our G1s. I remember that was the very first ROM I flashed. It was awesome because it was so much better, so much smoother, although the calendar constantly force closed. Jesus. Yes, Cyanogen Inc. has opened two offices, not one, but two, one in Seattle and one in Palo Alto, and they have about roughly 17 employees working for them, and they raised $7 million for all this. I can't, I, all right, I'm fundraiser, Mandroid. Pretty awesome stuff, and what does this mean for the Cyanogen Mod platform? Well, good things. Hopefully they want to be a contender in the mobile platform, not necessarily overcoming Android, because obviously Cyanogen Mod is based off Android, but they want to at least be third in line above BlackBerry, above Windows, which will probably take them about a week to do that. But that wasn't it. They had an unnamed hardware partner that they were talking about, so we're like, okay, they're gonna be making some Cyanogen Mod phones that we've been hearing about. Finally, who's it going to be? HTC? <laughs> Of course not. Why would... HTC is still not that smart. Well, according to this new trailer right here for the N1, Steve from CyanogenMod goes, Hey, I can't wait to attend the Oppo event in Beijing, and guess what? Big things are coming, so hey, guess what? Looks like Oppo is that unnamed hardware partner. That's pretty exciting stuff. Oppo has always been developer friendly, so why not go with them? I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Who knows? I mean, Oppo is not really huge over in the States quite yet, but it's not a little... You know, with CyanogenMod helping them out, it could get pretty big. Of course, let me know what you guys think about all this. Were you hoping somebody else, a different OEM? Are you happy with the whole Oppo CyanogenMod partnership? Let me know, please. Then we go back to the HTC One Max and this whole thing about the processor not getting the Snapdragon 800. And I guess the reason why is because of Qualcomm. Yes, there was rumors that features on the phablet might not have been able been supported by a Snapdragon 800 for some reason, and that's a stupid rumor. But I guess the new rumor, and it's sounding legit, is that, <laughs> is that Qualcomm didn't really want to work with HTC because they're still a sinking ship. So that might be the reason why they're going with the S4 as opposed to the Snapdragon 800 because, you know, it's a more powerful processor, a little more expensive, and you know, honestly, it's actually probably, now that I think about it, I don't know how many people are actually going to rush to get the HTC One Max. I mean, have you seen it compared to the Note 2? Holy crap. I mean, with the front-facing speakers, the boom sound, it's gigantic. Let me know what you guys think, as well as everything else. That's all the Android news I wanted to talk about today. Before I kill myself, I'm just kidding. And hey, hopefully you got your iPhone 5S and 5C. Yeah. Did I forget to make fun of this? Of course I did. Hey, I remember last year when I picked up a phone 
on launch day and I waited two minutes. Two. Probably two minutes. I uh, got off work, drove straight there, had to wait just because there was a lot of people in T-Mobile that were just trying to ha handle other things. And I walk up, this is when I purchased my 1S, and guess what? This phone was drastically different than the G2 I had the year before. So we got people waiting in line to buy pretty much the same exact phone. Oh, except this, I got a fingerprint scanner! How many freaking fingerprints did the NSA get last night, right now? Guess what? <laughs> Good job, people! Your fingerprint is now stored somewhere where they can access it whenever they want. Alright, that's all I wanted to talk about. I'm sure some people are still waiting in line for it, which is um, just, just, just sad. Sometimes I just can't understand the logic. I saw somebody post that they ordered the 5S for 700 bucks. Um, but they already had the five, 700 bucks to buy a fingerprint scanner. Anyways guys, enough of that. Let's get to that hot sexy portion of the show. This suggestion comes from a good friend of mine and holy crap, is she exotic. This week's Mandroid Hot Nerdy Girl of the Week is Yaya Han. I think I'm saying that right, hopefully I am, but holy crap, she does a lot of cosplay stuff, loves to dress up, she's dressed up in pretty much any female character you can think of. So enjoy these pictures. Yeah, yeah. Oh. If you have a hot nerdy girl suggestion, please leave it down below in the balls area and I'll try my best to get it on next week's show or the week after or the week after. You get what I'm saying. Alright guys, hit that like thumbs up button if you like today's show. Make sure you subscribe to the Android Spin channel if you have not already. And please subscribe to my other channel, The Film Junkie, where I do movie news, film reviews, and those autocorrect fails that everybody seems to like. You think they fixed that in iOS 7? <laughs> I hope not. Be out of business. Well, all right, guys, I am David, your Mandroid host, and this has been The Mandroid Show.